Hey everybody, welcome back to another WV Guns and Goods video. We're out here tonight for part three of our AIM 101 three-part video series for a scope comparison between the AIM 101, the AGM Rattler, and the ATN Excite. In part one and part two, if you haven't seen them, they're going to be down in the description of this video. Part one, I showed you the scope specs, some of its performance, and how to use all the menu items that this optic has. In part two, we put it on two different guns. We shot it on the close range and on the far range, and I showed you how to use its one-shot sight-in feature. In tonight's video, we're going to be comparing it to these two other optics, and I think you're really going to be impressed in the performance of the AIM-101 here. But before we get into any of that, I'd like to ask you to please headbutt that subscribe button to join the herd. Now, what do we have here? Well, we've got the AIM-101, we've got the AGM Rattler TS-25-384 thermal sight, and we have the ATN X-Sight 4K Pro 3 to 14X digital day and night vision scope. We've got an IR illuminator and this tri-adapter, we'll talk about that later in the video. As you see here, we've got some daylight out. These are the conditions the first part of this footage was filmed under. Then the second part of this video, well, we've been out here the last couple nights filming that under darkness. We have some footage filmed with moonlight and we have some footage filmed without moonlight. And I'll put a little note down at the bottom to let you know if we're looking at the moonlight or the non-moonlight. So I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the features that these three optics have compared to each other. Let's start with the AIM-101. This isn't gonna be a really in-depth comparison though. So this is a digital night vision and thermal fusion optic. We have a thermal lens here and we have a digital night vision lens here. These two lenses right here are for the built-in laser rangefinder that's good to out over a thousand yards. Then we have a built-in IR illuminator that flips up and turns on and turns off when you flip it down. This optic is powered by two 18650 batteries that are rechargeable and are replaceable, and it has a built-in thumb wheel mount. This is also a 1 to 4x magnification optic. Our little thermal here, the AGM Rattler, this is a 1 to 8x magnification with four different color modes. The AIM-101 has four different image modes. It has a dedicated digital night vision mode, a thermal overlay 1 and 2, and a dedicated thermal mode. This has a built-in throw lever mount. It is also the smallest of the three optics. It has Wi-Fi capabilities, and it also has onboard memory for storing photos and videos, but I'm not sure of the amount of memory it has. I'll put it down below on the screen there. And the AIM-101 has 128 gigabytes of onboard memory for photos and videos. Then we get to the ATN here. It's the largest and heaviest of all three because it tries to keep a traditional scope form factor here. So it uses regular scope rings. It has the sunshade on it and you can see it's still the largest of them if the sunshade wasn't attached. Now this is a rechargeable optic, but the batteries are not replaceable. And speaking of batteries, I forgot to mention that the little Rattler there is powered by two CR-123 batteries. It is not rechargeable. However, this optic is rechargeable, but batteries are not user replaceable. If they ever go bad, well, you have to send it to ATN. Now this can record videos and photos, but it does not have any onboard storage. You have to buy a micro SD card with it. It also does not have a built-in laser rangefinder. That is something that you can purchase from ATN as an add-on. Now, when you're gonna use this optic after dark, you need an IR illuminator. You'll see later in this video why you need one. And this is the little ATN IR illuminator that they sell. And it's got its own rail mount here. This takes a single 18650 battery. And then our little tri-adapter here. This is from a company called Move, Shoot, Move. And this attaches to the scope like so. It just goes around the eyepiece there and it holds an iPhone. And some of our footage for tonight was captured with the iPhone looking through these optics. And some of the footage is captured using the onboard recording abilities of the ATN and the AIM-101. Now the footage that we captured through the Rattler here is streamed to a recording device. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and compare these optics during the day and after dark. 
First up, here's what we're looking at without the optics. And these targets are at about 16 yards. Here's the A101. And now the ATN X sight. And now the AGM rattler. And now we're gonna compare them side by side by side. We have the AIM-101 first, the ATN in the middle, and the Rattler on the right. You've seen static targets. Here it is without the optics. We're going to check out some animals here. More specifically, these goats. Looking at them with the AIM-101 digital night vision and thermal fusion optic. We are using the onboard recording capabilities of these optics. Here we have the ATN x -Sight digital day and night vision optic. And then we have the AGM Rattler thermal optic. Now that we've looked at them here individually, let's check them out side by side. And here we have it side by side by side, all three optics compared. With two of these optics having thermal capabilities, let's check out their image modes. So we have a thermal overlay one and a black hot mode, a thermal overlay two and a fusion color mode, then a regular thermal mode, and a red alert mode and now we're back to digital night vision and white hot mode now all of these optics offer digital zoom here's 2x with the aim on a 1 4x back to 1x and now we have the atn this is a 3 to 14x optic digital zoom zooming all the way in and back out And now we have the AGM Rattler. This is a 1 to 8x magnification. Here's 2x. And here's 4x. And here is the 8x magnification. And generally, the more you zoom in with digital optics, the more pixelated the image becomes. We can see that best with the AGM Rattler here. As we have all three optics on the screen to compare to each other, you see the image quality really degrades with the AGM the further you zoom in. And now be prepared for the biggest difference in performance in these optics after dark. However, before we look at anything after dark, let's look at it during the day. You're looking at about 140 yards to the tree line there. Now the conditions we are filming under, is a full moon however it's cloudy which means there's no direct moonlight shining down you're seeing the performance of the aim 101 without any supplemental light just filming by the moonlight however the aim 101 has a built-in ir illuminator as you see right here you flip it up to turn it on you flip it down to turn it off and it improves the image quality now next up we have the atn X site. As you can see, or maybe not, you really can't see much of anything right now. I'll go ahead and put what we're looking at down in the corner there so you can see. Now even though our distance and lighting conditions have not changed, the ATN is basically unusable without a source of IR light. Even though we have a good bit of moonlight, the ATN just isn't good enough. Of course, we can add an IR light source, and you can see it right here. But keep in mind, you're going to stick out to either animals who can see the red glow of your illuminator, or anyone with a night vision device. Next up, we have the AGM Rattler. This is the thermal optic, and being thermal, it has no problem looking through this field after dark as we pan right, and then we pan back left again. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's any animals out here tonight. They would have really stood out on this thermal optic. And being thermal, you don't need IR illumination. And as always, here's all three optics compared so you can take a better look at them side by side by side. We're going to turn on the IR on the ATN X side here in a moment. There it is. And then we'll turn on the IR on the AIM-101 for y'all to check that out as well. Next up, we're gonna be looking out at distance. We're looking over this field here. The house in the distance is about 400 yards and there is a dust to dawn light 
on that pole there. You can see it here providing a bunch of light. And actually, you can tell just how sensitive the sensor in the AIM-101 is because it's kind of washed out from that light source. If we pan over here to the right, remember there's no moon out, but we can still clearly see all the fence posts here and the trees. As we pan back past the light source again, we get that bit of a washout, but then if we pan over here to the left, we can see clearly again. Let's go back to the center and check out the thermal overlay modes. Here's the thermal one, now here's the thermal two. We can easily see those two deer down there in the field. And then here is regular thermal mode. And then we'll go back to digital night vision to lead us into looking at the ATN-X site. As you can see, its sensor is able to benefit from that light in the distance, but when we pan away from it, all we're looking at is just pure darkness. Back at the light source again, and then back over here and you can see it's dark again. This optic will require active IR as I said earlier. So here's that IR illuminator. We're going to turn it on here in a moment. Now check it out. You can see that the IR light source actually makes the ATN usable after dark. But the AIM-101 does not require it because of just how good its sensor is. Of course, the AIM-101 will benefit if you decide to use one, but if you don't use one with the ATN, you'll just be seeing pitch blackness. But what about the AGM Thermal? How does it do? Well, here we can see it has no problem at all seeing out after dark. It does not need an IR light source since it just sees heat signatures. And you can see there's a cow down there in front of us and the deer in the background and the heat from the road. I really think combining a high-end digital night vision sensor with thermal capabilities really sets the AIM-101 apart from other digital night vision optics that require an IR light source. And that's what makes us such a cool optic. If you want to check them out or pick up one for yourself, you can go to shinix.com. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. This has been another WB Guns and Goats video.